And once you've saved the whole setup as an effect preset, you can drag it onto the graphics layer to create a customizable glow that looks more beautiful than the native glow effect alone. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a way how to imitate a physically correct glow that you usually get from the Deep Glow or Optical Glow plugin. But we're gonna create it with native effects. And this technique works best for motion graphics with transparent backgrounds. It's optimized to give them a quasi photoreal neon glow. In my first attempt to recreate these plugins, I used the inverse square law Deep Glow and Optical Glow are based upon, which basically describes the way how light drops off with further distance. But don't worry, I don't want to get deep into physics, we're gonna need a little expression though, but I found a less complex approach to create something similar that does not look 100% identical but very close to the high quality glow. But come on, who's gonna compare it side by side? But if you're curious, you can download the preset of the sort of physically based glow for a little tip. But more important to me was the color accuracy, which is quite difficult to preserve in the native glow effect alone. And because we're gonna apply a bunch of effects, another priority for me was to unify them into a single preset that you can easily drag and drop onto the layer with the ability to customize the super glow. Okay, let's glow. Uh, that was bad. What I wanted to say was, um, let's jump right into After Effects. My main composition Super Glow has 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160 pixels, and it's important that you set the project to 16 bits per channel. I've already put a shape layer animation into it, created with my 3D shape layer technique I made a tutorial about a while ago. Before we start, let me show you the plugin we're gonna recreate. I'm gonna apply the deep glow effect to the layer and increase the radius and the exposure to make the effect more visible. This looks really beautiful, but because of the video compression of this recording, you might see some color banding here. But in reality, it's a super smooth color gradient. There is also another plugin from Red Giant, it's called VFX Optical Glow, and it basically works the same. Let me increase the amount and the size to create a similar look. Because both plugins have a physically based inverse square falloff, they almost look identical and also really beautiful. And this is the kind of glow we want to recreate with native effects. Let's keep just one plugin as our visual reference. In the effect menu or effects and presets panel, go to expression controls and apply a slider control to the layer. Preset it to 100, duplicate it three times, rename the first control to Glow Size, the second one to Glow Fall Off, and the third one to Glow Amount. With these controllers, we later fine tune the glow, and they are the equivalents of the very basic parameters of optical glow. The last slider is just a visual separator to the upcoming effects we're gonna add next. Apply a fast box blur effect and increase iterations to 4, which will make the blur a bit smoother. Open effects, glow size, glow fall off, glow amount, and fast box blur to make the parameters accessible. Now grab the property pick whip of blur radius and drag it onto the glow size slider to let the blur radius be controlled by it. So, when you change the glow size slider, the blur radius will adopt the same value. The red colored value indicates that an expression has been created that reflects the connection between the two values. In preparation for the next steps, click into the expressions window, move the existing expression into the next line and create a variable GF that stands for glow falloff equals and property pick whip the glow falloff slider, which instantly creates the according expression and saves us a lot of typing. To complete the preparation, add divided by 10 to the expression so we'll have finer steps when we later control this value with a slider. For now, variable GF is not part of the effects calculation, so the blur radius just depends on the glow size value. Let's solo it and increase the composition exposure so we can see the blurred layer a bit better. Now look for the CC composite effect and put it below fastbox blur. 
we can barely see what the CC composite effect actually does. To make it more obvious, switch off RGB only, which also includes the alpha channel of the layer, and set composite original to add. Basically, this effect takes the original layer without the effects and layers it on top of the blurred image. It's nothing else than duplicating the layer with the effects deleted and the blending mode set to add. But let's undo this because we want to accomplish the same effect within a single layer instead, so we can keep the number of layers minimized. Then duplicate Fastbox Blur and CC Composite and drag them to the bottom of the effects stack. In the expressions window of the duplicated effect, mark the expression for the glow size control reference and expression pick width the blur radius of the previous fastbox blur effect. This way we replace the reference to the glow size slider with a connection to the previous blur radius. At this point the glow falloff variable comes into use when we add divided by gf to the expression, which makes the value smaller than the blur radius before. Duplicate these effects again and drag them to the bottom. Now we need to reconnect the value to the blur radius of Fastbox Blur 2. But this time we don't need to pick with anything, because it's faster to rename it to Fastbox Blur 2. Make sure that it matches the name of the effect, otherwise you'll get an expression error. Let's repeat this procedure by duplicating the bottom pair of effects, drag it to the stack's bottom, then duplicate the new pair again, drag it down, go into the expressions window of Fastbox Blur 4, rename Fastbox Blur 2 to Fastbox Blur 3, go into the expressions window of Fastbox Blur 5 and rename Fastbox Blur 2 to Fastbox Blur 4. So what's the idea about stacking up multiple pairs of Fastbox Blurs and CC composites? What we are basically doing is blurring the layer, compositing the original layer back on top of the blurred image, blurring this result again, compositing it back, and so on and so forth. The effect layering doesn't only enhance the glow, but the more we add a fastbox blur effect, the more the blur radius decreases. And we achieve this by dividing the result of its previous blur with the glow falloff value. This makes our super glow stronger close to the original graphics and declines with increasing distance, in a way that mimics the way how light drops off in reality, with my poor man's math expression. But these interconnections between the parameters not only enables you to control the falloff with a single slider, I can also spare you from inverse square physics law. But if you are still interested in how I implemented the inverse square formula, you can download the project file for a little tip. So far so good. But this is not the true glow. It's just artificially enhanced by the composition's exposure, which doesn't count. So when we reset the exposure, we can see that our super glow is actually not so super compared to optical glow. Let's duplicate the separator first to keep things clean and tidy, add a native glow effect to it, open glow, and connect the glow radius to the glow size slider, again with the help of the property pick whip. Now we have a basic glow enhancement. Next look for the calculations effect, put it below the glow effect and set second layer opacity to 100%. Here the calculations effect works like CC composite. But because it has some more options, I cannot only retrieve the original layer, I can also extract the alpha channel, which I set in second layer channel. This gives us a white fill. And when we set blending mode to overlay, we'll get that color shift that optical flow has in the glow center, which makes it more vibrant. This is without the overlay, and this is with the overlay turned on. Still looks weak compared to optical glow. That's why we should apply a levels effect with individual channel controls. Set channel to alpha and move the right handle to the left until you hit the histogram where it starts to get visible. You can also play around with the alpha gamma to get interesting results. But don't go so far like this. It would make sense to create a known control slider for it. But let's skip this for simplicity's sake. To give the glow an extra punch, apply another glow effect to it. Set Glow Threshold to 0% and Glow Radius to 0 as well. 
connect glow intensity to the glow amount slider, go into the expressions window and add divided by 100 to the expression for better control. Now let's fine tune the glow and change glow size slider to 150. We can keep the glow falloff value here, which is 20, and reduce the glow amount to 25. One last thing, because the colors don't really match. I found out that in the first glow effect, the glow threshold should be around 70% to get the colors right. Looks like a super glow to me. But what about comparing it to deep glow? Looks great as well. Now let's do a color test and change the color of the shapes. Color behavior also matches. And because I guess you don't want to set up numerous effects over and over again every time you need a super glow, you can select all effects, go to animation and save it as an animation preset. Although we animated nothing, but that doesn't matter. Let's try it out on a new object. So I'm going to create a text with an outline. You can find your preset under Animation Presets in the User Presets folder. And you just have to drag it onto the layer that adds all the effects needed for the Super Glow. And because the preset preserves all the expression links, you can also customize your glow. Please feel free to experiment with the parameters. For example, when you go into the Calculations effect and change Blending Mode to Add, you'll get some kind of a neon effect. One last tip. Keep in mind that it's not only the slider settings that make a nice glow, it's also the color subtleties, like the shading, that make the difference. Two very last tips. I've added another expression control, Glow Strength, connected all the CC Composite Opacity attributes to it and turned off the calculations effect. This way you can get some color back if you find your result overexposed. And if you see something like this that might occur on pre-compositions, go to the calculations effect and uncheck stretch second layer to fit. That's it guys. See you next time.